Okay, welcome back. I am, I'm just taking a look at the piston and the cylinder and I have the rings here. I have a variety of rings. So it is, when I'm going through Chilton's manual, it is, it provides a particular piston to cylinder gap and checking out the uh, let me get to that page they give some specifications for what it should be and so the gap there must be at least a 0.055 to 0.065 gap between the cylinder and the piston so that is like incredibly small i mean it is and i have found two feeler gauges that are close here's the first one the first one is 0 0.05 and so this is generally how the piston is going to get lined up so here's the intake side here's the exhaust side so I am checking okay so it's at least 0 0.05 but the minimum needs to be at least 0 0.055 I don't have anything above that because the best scenario is to check 0 0.06 millimeters or 0 0.07 I don't have it so I have a 0 0.04 so 0 0.04 plus 0 0.05 would be 0 0.09 millimeters which again is incredibly tight. So I am, I'm just gonna put these together to see where we're at. And so it is 0 0.09, and that's really kind of what it is, 0 0.09. So we are above the 0 0.065, which is good because it needs to be at least 0 0.055. So we know it's at least point. 0 0.09 millimeters so we're good to go on that the next is let's take a look at the the gaps for the uh, piston rings so the gap for the uh, compression ring needs to be point between 0.3 to 0.45 millimeters so here is here is the first Here's the compression ring. So you can see the gap right there. So let's measure it out. So we need point, point three. So Boy, these things are all mixed up, really. Point zero Here's 0 0.38, 0 0.38 fits. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it goes in really kind of easily, 0.38. Let's go up to, here is point, here we go, here is point, 0 0.40. So this is kind of like right in the middle. Point four zero goes in. Here's point four five. 
So, point four five goes in too. So it is so, um, yeah. I've just noticed these ring gaps are just so huge. Um, let's try the scraper ring. So the scraper ring, well, that's actually kind of positive because the 0.45 doesn't go in. So this should be between 0 0.30 and 0.45. So the, um, let's try 0.43. Okay, 0.43 goes in, and it really actually has lots of friction, so that's a good ring. And let me see if I have a different compression ring. Let's see if this is the same one. Let me go the oil ring. Oil ring needs to be um, basically 0 0.40. And yeah, I mean, it's just kind of huge. Oh, here's a different oil. That's huge too. So let me stand, stand by. Okay, we're back. And I have great rings actually. So here is here's the first one. This is the um, uh, the top compression ring. It fits perfectly in the groove. So that's so Specifications are 0.30 to 0.45. So I'm going to pull out. Here's 0 0.30 right here. So here's 0 0.30. It's actually, they say it's 0 0.306. So it's a click above 0 0.30. And so it goes in there super tight, which is nice. Let's go up a size. Let's go to 0 .3, 0 0.381. 0 .301 goes in there. Let's try 0 .43. And now we're going to go to the upper limit, 0 .45. Okay, 0 .45 goes in, but it scrapes. Okay, so we're kind of good on that ring. Second ring is the uh, oil scraper ring. Let's try 0.45 to begin with. And it barely goes in. So that one's good too. And the oil ring is at the super upper limit. So, yeah, I mean, that's super upper limit. So, I think these cylinder, these rings are good to go. And it is, I guess let's get started. I'm gonna take it apart first. Um, so,
I will try to record as much as possible about about this. So, stand by.